good afternoon to everyone so uh, uh, welcome to another online uh, activity of jaipur surgical school just to give a brief introduction this is a online activity that is being conducted every friday 3 to 4 pm and under the guidance of professor vk kapoor so basically this is an initiative basically for the students as well as general surgery trainees in the middle east countries who are not able to attend the morning session so we are having lecture uh, every friday with some or the other eminent faculty from country or the abroad uh, and uh, in this same series uh, today as a new thing we have a seminar on carcinoma gallbladder by dr rishikesh who is pursuing his mch in second year at mahatma gandhi medical college jaipur to moderate this session i welcome dr anand nagar who is a uh, associate professor in hpp surgery and liver transplant at mahatma gandhi hospital medical college jaipur and also we have dr rajendra desai with us to guide and proceed so over to dr anand good afternoon everyone i am uh, dr shikesh i will be presenting uh, regarding carcinoma gallbladder staging and management i will be covering the topic in following headings uh, which includes epidemiology clinical features relevant clinical anatomy staging systems diagnostic modalities and treatment <clears throat> coming to the epidemiology uh, the incidence increases with age the male to female ratio is 2.6 is to 1 in uh, for the cagb and in india it uh, carcinoma gallbladder is mainly in the uh, concentrated in north india mainly in the gangetic belts which include northeastern northern and northeastern states of uttar pradesh bihar orissa west bengal and assam the total incidence is uh, 21.5 out of 1 lakh uh, and it is the second highest in the world and it is mainly uh, concentrated in the women in delhi according to the consensus statement in cgb that is from icmr 2017 coming to the anatomy mainly uh, gallbladder is uh, Uh, gallbladder has uh, gallbladder is a uh, structure which is mainly re related to the liver and its relations are anteriorly and superiorly inferior border of the liver and anterior abdominal wall posteriorly transverse colon and proximal duodenum and inferiorly the biliary tree and remaining parts of the duodenum the uh, coming to the lymphatic drainage the there is no ascending drainage back to the liver hilum there is extensive drainage into the surrounding lymph nodes and which leads to the uh, leads to gallbladder uh, carcinoma gallbladder uh, uh, advancing into higher stages uh, at early presentation and a good knowledge of lymphatic anatomy is important for proper staging and resection of the gallbladder local lymph nodes uh, include mainly the cystic nodes or a pericoledocal nodes which drain into posterior so, uh, superior pancreatic or duodenal nodes or uh, which can drain into retroportal nodes and right celiac nodes and finally uh, all these nodes drain into the interaortocaval node i will uh, go through the lymphatic drainage in detail in future slides coming to the clinical presentation uh, most commonly if the uh, patient presents to us with the symptom of pain abdomen seen in around 60 to 85% of the cases and it is a constant dull aching pain present in the right upper quadrant and uh, 40% of the patients uh, present to us uh, present to with jaundice and jaundice can be a early complaint if the tumor is arises from neck of gallbladder Uh, and if there is a uh, hilar block then uh, and patient presents with jaundice it is usually having a bad prognosis other uh, other symptoms include uh, significant weight loss that is seen around in 30 to 80% of the cases and history of significant weight loss in short duration of time is present and may show features of cachexia and uh, 10 to 50% of patients can present with palpable gallbladder mass so the pattern of spread in the carcinoma gallbladder direct spread is the commonest spread of the tumor and it is mainly 55 to 65% into the liver which is facilitated by direct venous drainage through liver parenchyma directly into the hepatic veins and segment 4 and 5 invasion can be present other direct invasion can happen in colon duodenum or pancreas coming to the lymph node invasion which is the second most common uh, so uh, pattern of spread 
there are total of three pathways through which lymph nodes uh, cancer can spread through the lymph nodes first pathway is the cholecysto retro pancreatic pathway it is the principal pathway and it drains along the cystic duct uh, nodes that is the cystic nodes the cbd nodes that is the pericolidocal nodes and retro retro portal nodes and finally into the superior retro pancreatic duodenal nodes so this pathway uh, in one study it, it has shown that this pathway constitutes a 95% of pattern of spread through the lymph nodes in patients the other pathways include cholecystoceliac pathway which is the next most common pathway and it drains through uh, cystic nodes uh, medially along the hepato duodenal ligament posterior to the head of pancreas then to the portal vein and finally to, to the celiac axis and the third pathway is the cholecysto mesenteric pathway uh, that drains uh, to the left in the front of the portal vein connecting with the nodes and to the superior mesenteric nodes other forms of uh, spread are hematogenous spread uh, cbd invasion that is ductal invasion can be perineural spread and intraperitoneal metastasis which uh, occur usually after the tumor uh, breaks the serosal coverage and peritoneal uh, seeding occurs uh, which uh, causes the peritoneal metastasis so uh, what are the investigations which can help in the diagnosis of this carcinoma gallbladder coming to the basic blood investigations uh, a cbc can be done to look for any uh, anemia Uh, which can be nutritional anemia and leukocytosis in the form of uh, if it is present with jaundice it can be raised in cholangitis and liver function tests enzymes usually they are elevated in later stages elevated bilirubin or alp can indicate to advanced disease or uh, obstructive jaundice and uh, which has poor prognosis and other tumor markers which include cea which has a specificity of 90% but sensitivity of 50% and ca19.9 which has minimal diagnostic value and ca19.9 can be used to detect recurrence if elevated before treatment and normalize after treatment coming to the first radiological investigation that is to be done that is the ultrasound the suspicious finding in the usg include mural thickening or calcification mass protruding into the lumen fixed mass in the gall bladder loss of interface between the gall bladder and the liver and direct liver infiltration polyps usually more than 1 cm diameter are more likely to contain an invasive cancer and needs to be addressed cross section imaging uh, is uh, useful for evaluation of resectability or in the form of post incidental detected carcinoma gall bladder and the imaging of choice is cct which uh, gives us lymph nodes involvement and also the vascular anatomy the advantage of mrcp or mri in over cct is it can differentiate it benign and malignant polyp invasion into hdl structures and lymph uh, and portal vein encasement this is the cross sectional imaging showing the gall bladder which is the uh, gall bladder cancer which is a hypodense area of infiltration into the liver uh, there is an, an another entity called xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis uh, these both xantho versus cagb they are similar on imaging both can coexist even intraoperative differentiation is difficult and they both look similar there are few points which can help in uh, help to differentiate uh, differentiate these they, uh, they include diffuse gallbladder wall thickening in xantho continuous mucosal line intramural hypoattenuated nodules absence of any macroscopic hepatic invasion or absence of intrahepatic bile duct dilatation coming to the next investigation that is the endoscopic ultrasound it has higher sensitivity than transabdominal ultrasound it is used to assess can be helpful in assessment of the depth of tumor invasion into the wall of gallbladder lymph node involvement in the porta hepatis or peripancreatic regions and their cytology from the gall blood uh, from the bile can be obtained through eus and eus guided fnac uh, can be done in non resectable or a metastatic disease the bile which we have taken for cytology it has a sensitivity of detection of malignancy in 70 uh, to 73 to 75% It, this is useful only if palliative procedures are planned and it is not warranted routinely in the pre-op evaluation uh, 
next uh, investigation is the pet ct uh, it is usually not recommended for pre op evaluation in nccn or smo guidelines but we uh, do it in our institutions in all the cases it has role in detection of occult metastasis restaging detection of recurrence and also helps in the follow up it has sensitivity of 57 to 80% and specificity of 80 to 94% fnsc of the lesion that is trans abdominal fnsc or uh, is not usually advised for pre op resectable diseases cagb tends to see the peritoneum biopsy tracts port sites and surgical wounds percutaneous biopsy has 90% sensitivity it is usually used in uh, unresectable or metastasis disease to help in the adjoint therapy proceeding to the staging staging uh, there is, uh, the latest staging is 8th edition ajcc which is uh, widely used currently old staging systems include nevins modified nevins and japanese staging system tnm is currently the most important prognostic factor for uh, uh, carcinoma gallbladder i'll just brush up through the old staging systems uh, these includes nevin staging system it is divided into five and from one to five it uh, proceed it <clears throat> the it, it is based on the basically the invasion of the uh, layers and structures of around the gallbladder and uh, for example the stage one is uh, invades mucosa only then muscularis and mucosa then subserosa muscularis and mucosa and all in stage 4 it is all layers of gb and into the liver blood or distant spread currently it is not used even modified ne nevin system uh, is not used and uh, the <clears throat> staging system which is currently the gold standard is the tnm staging the tnm staging uh, as seen in this figure t1a is the laminopropria invasion and t1b is the muscular layer of the gallbladder invasion t2 uh, t2 has, has been divided in the 8th edition into t2a and t2b t2a is the invasion of the uh, tumor onto the peritoneal uh, surface and t2b is invasion of the tumor onto the liver uh, on the liver side of the gallbladder so i'll just go uh, the changes between the t stage between ajcc 7th and 8th is basically the t2 disease is now subdivided since the peritoneal side of invasion has better prognosis than the hepatic side the reason is the overall survival as we can see in the graph the overall survival rate of invasion on the peritoneal side has significantly is significantly more than the invasion than the patients which are have who are having invasion on the hepatic sides so the, it is divided into t2a t2a uh, and t2b and t3 includes tumor perforates the serosa or directly invades the liver or any one of the adjacent organ such as the nearby structure duodenum colon and uh, extra hepatic bile ducts t4 includes the invasion of uh, undissectable structures main portal vein hepatic artery or two or more extra hepatic organs uh coming to the end stage so what is the difference between ajcc 8th and ajcc 7 in the form of end staging the ajcc 8th edition they have changed from the location based end staging to a number based assessment currently a uh, minimum of six or more lymph nodes should be harvested and evaluated and this um, and the number of metastatic lymph nodes and the lymph node ratio are more prognostic uh, prognostic value then the location of the metastatic lymph nodes so uh, the currently number of lymph nodes are used for end staging the they have just divided the lymph nodes into regional nodes and metastatic nodes regional no, regional nodes include uh, nodes along the common bile duct hepatic artery portal vein and cystic duct nodes beyond the hepatoduodenal ligament like the periaortic pericaval sma celiac artery and um, intraaortic cable nodes are considered as m1 disease so end staging is now number of nodes n1 uh, 1 2 3 lymph nodes and n2 is four or more lymph nodes and uh, these are divided into specific stages according to the uh, tnm staging and usually these uh, these the 
patients present usually in the, most of the common presentation is in the T2 stage where say 58% of the patients uh, are uh, presenting in the T2 stage and next is the T3 stage where 30% of the patients are presenting then 95% uh, of the patient presenting with jaundice are usually unresectable and median overall survival is less than 6 months and lymph node positivity rate goes on increasing when the T stage goes on increasing. The positive is in T2 is 21% and T3 is 44%, which has, uh, since the stage has uh, increasing, there is poor prognosis. Uh, and th this, this is an article showing the modif uh, they have modified the AJCC 8th edition staging system into uh, they have modified in the form of that the uh, both AJCC had included and, and this is both in 4B but the patients with N2 undergo R0 resection and had longer survival than patients with M1 disease. So these uh, need needed to be modified and also they have found that apparently stage 3A patients had poorer uh, survival than stage 3B patients since uh, uh, poorer, uh, poorer survival. Furthermore, T1 uh, to 2, N1, M0 patients were moved to stage 3A from 3B and T3 patients have also been moved from uh, moved to stage 3B from 3A to correct this aberrant reversal of curve. Coming to the management, uh, the mainstay of management is the surgical management and it has uh, it is the only curative option present of, uh, in the current uh, armamentarium of the treatment treatments the other others include chemotherapy in the form of adjuvant chemotherapy in the form of neoadjuvant chemotherapy and uh, radiotherapy and there is a ro uh, doubtful role of combined therapy in the form of combined radio chemotherapy and also palliative treatment. Coming to the surgical management, it is the only curative option present. There is no role of for a palliative non-curative radical surgery for in the purpose of uh, debulking the tumor. So only resectable cases are being proceeded. Initially, stage staging uh, laparoscopy is done, followed by extended cholecystectomy. Extended cholecystectomy is done. Uh, plus or minus uh, major liver resection if required or a multi organ resection uh, so what is the help uh, what is the use of staging laparoscopy it must be done in every case because there is high risk of occult metastasis uh, benefits are that it has less post operative less post operative pain less morbidity less hospital stay if uh, the surgery is not proceeded into a laparotomy uh, there is a paper uh, there is an analysis prospective analysis of 409 patients uh, which showed uh, staging laparoscopy identified 94% of the diagnostic laparoscopies and thereby obviated a non therapeutic laparotomy it in 55% of the patient with unresectable disease so overall yield they have found that staging laparoscopy yields 23% uh, to detect occult metastasis. Then coming to the role of, uh, of staging laparoscopy followed by sampling of the inter aortocaval nodes, which is considered as M1 disease. Uh, article published by uh, uh, Anil, uh, Dr. Anil Agarwal uh, shows that the routine inter aortocaval lymph node uh, sampling before proceeding to the resection, prevented non-therapeutic radical resection and its associated morbidity in 18% of the patients, which were deemed resectable on preoperative imaging and also on staging laparoscopy. The yield was uh, the positive yield was higher in patients with jaundice and elevated preoperative tumor markers. So the uh, intraiotic cable in, uh, lymph node can be done either laparoscopy or open and it should be done before proceeding to the curative resection. So coming to the surgery, uh, extended cholecystectomy includes resection of gallbladder, two centimeter wedge of the liver, hepatoduodenal lymph nodal clearance with or without excision of bile duct as shown in this figure. The bile duct excision is indicated only if suspicion of infiltration into the porta hepatis is present cystic and also intraop frozen section of cystic duct margin if it is positive it has advantage of bile duct excision uh, which uh, 
facilitates the lymph node dissection but the disadvantage is the increased morbidity but not survival uh liver resection uh, is can be add, uh, added in the form of wedge uh, wedge resection that is 1 to 2 cm of the liver wedge of the gallbladder fossa segmental resection which is includes the anatomical resection of segment 4b and 5 and extended right hepatectomy which uh, includes uh, uh, removal of uh, Five, six, seven, eight, along with four B. A liver. Uh, so, issue with liver resection is high mortality and morbidity, and there is uh, uh, improved overall survival, overall improved or disease-free survival. So, the uh, uh, to decrease the high morbidity and mortality, the current practice is to perform only the extent of hepatic resection necessary to achieve the tumor clearance. So. CHB can be diagnosed before surgery, uh, suspected before surgery, detected intraoperatively, or identified on final histopathology. When uh, diagnosed, how to uh, when diagnosed before surgery, assess for resectability on CT or MRI with chest images for metastasis. Currently, we in our institute we are doing PET whole body PET CT, which has replaced chest imaging and requirement of other imaging uh, to look for any liver any metastasis. And unresectable cases include liver metastasis, peritoneal metastasis, malignant ascites, and tumor involvement of uh, M1 lymph nodes, and extensive involvement of HD HDL by our encasement of uh, occlusion, encasement or occlusion of major vessels, including hepatic common hepatic artery and portal vein. So, in T1 disease, T1A. Is diagnosed usually incidentally after cholecystectomy, for which simple cholecystectomy has curative uh, range from 73 to 100 percent. And T1B, since it has higher incident of lymph node involvement, extended cholecystectomy is a treatment of choice since it gives uh, in, uh, improvement in the overall survival. In T2, a standard of care is extend, uh, extended cholecystectomy. In T3, extended cholecystectomy with end block uh, excision of adjacent organ. And in T4, general and it, they are generally unresectable owing to the vascular involvement. So the protocol uh, in preoperative thick wall GB that is more than 3 mm wall thickness can be chronic cholecystitis, it can be xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis, and it can be carcinoma gallbladder. Simple cholecystectomy, if it is performed, it is a simple procedure, but there is, if it is a CAGB, the tissue planes are lost for oncologic uh, resection. And extended cholecystectomy, uh, if it is done, it has high morbidity when compared to simple cholecystectomy. And it is not required for uh, chronic cholecystitis or xanthogranulomatous cholecystitis. So there is a uh, Middle ground in the form of anti uh, anticipatory extended cholecystectomy, the Lucknow approach, uh, as described by uh, Vikay Kapoor sir. Uh, AEC in involves removal of gallbladder with two centimeter wedge of liver. It is then subjected to frozen section, and li uh, lymphadenectomy is done if the gallbladder cancer is confirmed on frozen section. And in uh, in pa uh, the results include the inpatients uh, with. Uh, gallbladder cancer on U, uh, ultrasound or CT with low suspicion of cancer. AEC serves as a triage. If the frozen section is biopsy is positive, AEC can be completed, uh, in, converted into extended cholecystectomy by performing lymphadenectomy. If the tumor is diagnosed during the surgery, early cancers are usually asymptomatic, can mimic cholelithiasis, cholecystitis. We should have high suspicion, high index of suspicion required with high... So the next step depends on the experience of the surgeon or the presence of preoperative consent. If the surgeon is uh, experienced, uh, usual cholecystectomy, if it is uh, sent for present and it count, came out to be positive, convert to open extended cholecystectomy with or without bile duct resection. If the surgeon is inexperienced, close the incision with or without simple cholecystectomy. Uh, cholecystectomy and refer to a more experienced surgeon. There is no significant differences in survival who underwent immediate open conversion and radical resection who were referred to the higher center. If the, uh, if the carcinoma gallbladder is diagnosed after surgery in the final histopathology report, 
the chances of this incidental carcinoma gallbladder is around 0.25 to 3 percent undergo under patients in patients undergoing laparoscopic cholecystectomy. In previously unsuspected patients, cross-sectional imaging is re repeated in the form of CECT or a PET CT. If T stage of the resected incidental uh, gallbladder cancer is T1B, T2 or T3, surgical re-exploration and re-resection can be done. T4 tumors, by definition, uh, shouldn't be missed in uh, on initial laparoscopy. And uh, multitudinal uh, institutional analysis was done, uh, which uh, divided the patients in group three groups. First group uh, less than four weeks, and second group four to eight weeks, and uh, third group uh, more than eight weeks re resection. So they found out the longest median survival. In was in the group B that was 40 months versus group A or group C which was 17 and 22 months respectively. So, but uh, we follow that the re resection or the resectable tumor or the completion radical cholecystectomy should be done as soon as possible. And the recent uh, gui guidelines show that there is uh, port site resection or excision was not associated with overall survival or recurrence free survival in the patients. And prevention of this port site metastasis can be prevented by desufflating the pneumoperitoneum with trocars in C2 or using an endo bag for removal of gallbladders. So, uh, in 2017, they proposed a model to predict recurrence in the carcinoma gallbladder after histopathology. This uh, gallbladder cancer predictive risk score includes T staging, grade of the tumor, uh, lymphovascular involvement, and perineular, perineural uh, uh, invasion. It uh, divides into uh, total risk of recurrence, low, intermediate, and high risk. And uh, uh, if the uh, if the gallbladder in, is uh, in the high risk, that is score of eight to ten, it has local local regional recurrence of sixty one percent and distant disease of thirty two percent. So minimal invasive uh, surgery can be done for uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Uh, it has been already established that uh, there are acceptable post operative outcomes when compared to the open surgery. Most type, most common type of liver resection reported is the wedge resection of gallbladder bed, and uh, laparoscopic lymph node dissection for early GBC was shown shown to be safe and adequate procedure from oncological point of view. Bile duct resection is not a contraindication for laparoscopic surgery in gallbladder cancer, and there is no difference between laparoscopic and open. Uh, open surgery in suitably selected patients. Robotic uh, extended cholecystectomy can also be done, but there is no li current literature available. And there is a small series uh, which shows no statistical differences between the operative times, adequacy of liver resection, lymph node uh, yield uh, when compared to the open extended coli. And robotic has its own advantage of less uh, post-operative pain and it, there are uh, uh, long term studies are still awaited in the in robotic uh, approach of the extended cholecystectomy coming to the adjunctive therapy in the form of chemo radiotherapy mm. uh, advanced stage at presentation around 15% are only resectable and also recurrence is common even after r0 resection local regional recurrence is 15% in that 85% is distant uh, recur uh, distant recurrence uh, so, the indications of adjuvant chemotherapy includes T1B disease, more than T1B disease, node positive or margin positive. Preferred drugs are gemcitabine, 5 fluorouracil, and capacitabine, either alone or in combination. Gemcitabine uh, based regimens are usually in node positive and margin positive disease and in unresectable palliative intent of treatment. Combined uh, chemo radiotherapy the, is preferred in all margin positives and node positive disease. Uh, in this, uh, in the form of adjuvant chemotherapy, they they have said that uh, adjuvant chemotherapy increases the five five year overall survival. And there are few papers which in, compare many chemotherapy drug regimens. And in adjuvant chemotherapy, it was in uh, uh, it was shown that the adjuvant gemcitabine and oxaloplatin 
that is the gemox regimen has uh, no benefit of in the form of adjuvant treatment in resected biliary tract cancer despite adequate tolerance and delivery of the regimen but it has been showed that uh, in the capacitabin based regimen that is bilcap um, trial that the single agent capacitabin is considered standard of care in adjuvant chemotherapy in resected gallbladder uh, cancer patients and it has improved overall uh, uh, overall survival when patients uh, under patients had capacitabin based therapy in the adjuvant setting the uh, chemotherapy can be given in form of new adjuvant therapy also few small retrospective studies have shown promising uh, outcomes with such an approach uh, regarding increased resectability but still further studies are required in the form of new adjuvant therapy in new adjuvant therapy uh, locally advanced unresectable disease uh, there is th this is the paper uh, published by tata memorial in 2016 and uh, it show it has uh, 28 patients with locally advanced unresectable gallbladder cancer on presentation chemo radiation therapy was given and 71% achieved partial or complete radiological response 16 patients along among the 28 patients underwent surgical resection and 14 achieved r0 resection and uh, the median overall survival of these patients is 20 months so the other uh, the patients who have unresectable gallbladder cancer they require palliative treatment which is the final option for them so in unresectable disease uh, cancer we, they can develop jaundice upper abdominal pain or symptoms of biliary obstruction median overall survival is 6 months drainage of as little as 30% of liver parenchyma may be sufficient to palliate the jaundice and relieve pruritus palliative treatment can be in the form of endoscopic or percutaneous biliary drainage endoscopic metallic stenting or bypass biliary bypass uh, surgery can be done and uh, but this has risk of recurrent obstruction as the disease progresses and in one study a uh, intrahepatic segment 3 cholangiogenostomy was done staying away from the hdl the most common site of disease and these this has also helped in successfully palliative majority of the patients uh, palliative chemotherapy mainly the adjuvant as we discussed adjuvant chemotherapy was in the form of capacitabin based therapy and in palliative uh, chemotherapy uh, it is mainly based on uh, gemcitabin based along with either cisplatin or oxaliplatin so the overall survival uh, in the gemcitabin in the indian setting gems gemox regimen versus best supportive care versus 5 fluorouracil was compared and they found that uh, the overall survival on the for the gemox based regimen was uh, around 9 uh, 9 and 1/2 months which was uh, significantly higher when compared to the best supportive care so uh, uh, what do we do for the follow up after the resection there is no evidence based guidelines currently for the follow up uh, usually three monthly visits was done uh, during first two years after therapy followed by six monthly visit until five years and annual visits after five years of follow up nccn suggests cct image uh, cross sectional imaging to be done every six months for two years then annually for five years and tumor markers when clinically indicated or when a local recurrence or metastasis is suspected so this graph shows the survival as the stage increases the survival of the uh, patients decrease so if in the patient has t3 t4 the uh, five year oral survival dips down to 15 to 20% when compared to the t1 that is 80 to 100% and if the patients have lymph node positive even the survival is uh, less than 20% so to summarize gb can carcinoma is a highly aggressive tumor with higher mortality and recurrence rates so staging laparoscopy and inter aorta cable lymph node sampling uh, should be done before radical resection is proceeded extended cholecystectomy is standard of care for more more than or equal to t1b tumor current practice is to perform only the extent of hepatic resection necessary to achieve tumor clearance and adjuvant chemotherapy is indicated in more than or equal to t1b disease nodal disease or a margin positive disease 
capacitavin based chemotherapy is preferred in the form of systemic therapy in resected gallbladder cancer and gemcitabin based doublet with either cisplatin or oxaliplatin is preferred in palliative chemo in palliative chemotherapeutic regimen thank you dr rishikesh for the uh, presentation uh, any comments sir, regarding the presentation yeah. uh, i felt you should have covered a little bit about the etiology and the association between gallbladder stone disease and gallbladder cancer yes there is evidence of association but there is no evidence of uh, causative uh, cause of gallbladder stones except there is one interesting paper from uh, i think sweden or norway where yes. they have shown as they have as laparoscopic cholecystectomy has started the incidence of gallbladder cancer is reducing in their country so that why they think that uh, there might be a role for prophylactic cholecystectomy in asymptomatic gallstones as well personally at a personal level i feel in north india if you have a patient with gallstone disease even minimal symptoms should prompt you to do a cholecystectomy because you have gallbladder cancer uh, such a high incidence but no study has ever proven this association yes. the other thing is abnormal uh, pancreato biliary duct junction has also been shown to be a causative factor for uh, gallbladder cancer where apdpdj without bile duct dilatation is associated with increased incidence of gallbladder cancer if there is bile duct cancer if the bile duct is dilated that is a cholecystic cyst is there then the cancer is the entire biliary tree is increased incidence of cancer is there but if it is only apdpdj without dilatation then gallbladder cancer is more common and japanese authors advocate uh, doing a cholecystectomy in such a circumstance so the form of frustate uh, cholecystic cyst is an indication for cholecystectomy while it might not be an indication for uh, bile duct resection yes sir so abnormal, comment. abnormal then, junction can be only diagnosed matlab usually in the background of cholecystic cyst only sir matlab they present no, you with... have to do if you have biliary symptoms yes. and there is gallbladder stone disease doing an mrcp is required if you suspect uh, apdpdj mm -hmm. there will be some features of uh, pain in apdpdj which are not seen in those with a normal apdpdj that's how they have found it and uh, as you know cholangiocarcinoma is very high in incidence in japan and taiwan and uh, china so mm -hmm. they tend to do mrcp more frequently than we do for symptomatic biliary disease so that could be another reason how they are detecting apdpdj yes the other thing is uh, pathology of uh, bile duct cancer uh, yes. i mean carcinoma gallbladder few points one is uh, mass forming gallbladder uh, cancer has a better prognosis than an infiltrative form of cancer papillary if it is completely resectable it has a good prognosis but papillary also is associated with increased incidence of bile duct involvement mm, yes so that is the thing i wanted to say then the other thing i wanted to mention was in resection you should have covered a little bit about extended right hepatectomy i know mm. it's becoming unpopular and only segment 4 and segment 5 is thought to be enough to cure it but yes, there sir. is a small role for uh, extended right hepatectomy yes i don't think there is much indication for a hepatopancreatic duodenectomy but the argument was when we did a hepatopancreatic duodenectomy was the posterior superior group of lymph nodes in the head of the pancreas that are involved they mm -hmm. need to be removed along with the uh, liver for it to be a curative resection but it is not shown to be true in experience as experience has progressed mm -hmm. so those were the few comments i wanted to make thank you yes thank you uh, thank you dr rishikesh thank you rajinder sir rishikesh uh, dr rishikesh covered very well all the top, all the things my few points added by uh, rajinder sir regarding the etiology association and the pathology